Hey, what's happening guys? Today I want to show you this. This is, as you can see, an RF sampler that I ordered off of eBay from a company called Electro Resales LLC. This cost me uh, $26.99 with free shipping, I believe. Hang on, let me see about that free shipping. Yes, free shipping. Uh, it came from Olathe, Kansas. And this was purchased with Patreon money. So thank you, Patrons. Uh, I couldn't have this channel here without you. So what is this and what does it do? Well, take a look at it and see if you can figure it out. We've got a BNC connector here, and we've got two of these, uh, what are these, PL259s, or the SO239s. I always get them confused. One is the male, one is the female. So we got these two things together. We know it is a uh, sampler, so we're going to pass some sort of RF in between these two points. It's going to say, come in here and go out there or out here and in there. It doesn't matter. And then a piece of it is going to be bled off down to here. So, let me take the lid off, and we'll see what's inside, because really, there's not a whole lot inside. It's quite a simple device, one you could easily make yourself, if you know what you're doing. Um, playing around with RF is, is no joke. If you've never had a radio frequency burn, you don't ever want one. They are really unpleasant. And uh, if you're going to hook this up to, say, your ham radio or your uh, CB with your 60-pill amplifier, well, there's going to be a lot of RF floating around in here, and that could be very dangerous for you. So just keep that in mind. All right, let's uh, zoom down here then. All right, so let's have a look here. As you can see, there's really not too much. We have our connectors on this side of the board. They come through. And then, oops, I picked up a screw. Our center connector, our signal connector, come with these really thick copper wires over to these points right here. And you see we have these huge ground planes. So our center points are coming here, and they're going right to this point, which is this first resistor. And that resistor comes here, and it goes over to this resistor, which follows over to here. No. Here. And then this is a capacitor. This is a 10 nanofarad capacitor used to decouple any DC out of there, I'm guessing. All right, let's see if I can read these values here. That looks like brown, red, gold. Is that what that looks like to you? No. That is yellow, purple, orange, gold. So if that is actually yellow, purple, orange, gold, that would be a 47K resistor. What the hell would this one be? Blue, gray, black, black, maybe? That don't make sense. All right, if I'm reading that correctly, blue, gray, black, black, brown would be, what, 680 ohms at a 1%? So we got a resistor divider of 47K and 680, right? Let's map that out. So I'm not quite sure if I got those values right, but this this is saying it's like a hundred to one drop. Let's go to the manual. Keep in mind, it's been a really long time since I've had RF math classes, so I may be a little off in my calculations. Anyway, so this says it's good from one to 50 megahertz, 50 ohm, uh, and it says the sample signal is 30 dB down. And it can handle 100 watts. I would not put 100 watts through this. You know, maybe 10 watts or so. 
all you need is to see what your modulation looks like or whatever other um, calculations you need to make it does look very solidly made and if you look here there's a little kind of Homer Simpson looking guy on there very nice very nicely done all right I'll put it back together and we'll show you what it does all right let's gather up the components we're gonna need we're gonna need the sampler and we're gonna need an antenna so this is the lead from my antenna outside it's a uh, 20 meter dipole hanging in an inverted V configuration about between I'd say 15 and 20 feet up in a tree so that is our RF signal going in our RF signal going out is going to go into this piece of coax right here I will move that out of the way and then we'll bring in the next player which is a radio in this case this is a 2 meter FM radio this is a Lucian VV898 which I will power up and it is set for my club repeater frequency so the last thing that we need to see is that sample port and that has a BNC here which I'll connect up and now everything is connected so let's roll up and over to the spectrum analyzer and of course there's a giant sunlight coming through the window so I have the spectrum analyzer set here on the center frequency of 147.66 and when I key up the mic we should see a peak there especially where that green diamond is so keep your eye on the green diamond Whiskey, Whiskey 8, Papa Romeo. From 500 feet up on the WPOV 9 tower, this is the WPHIIJ repeater, DL114.8. Oh yeah, it loves to talk. So anyway, you can see my frequency, 147.660, and my amplitude of minus... 7.73 dBm. WW8PR clear. And I'll turn off the radio. So why is something like this useful? Well, let's say you have an older radio or a new radio or any kind of radio whatsoever and you want to make sure it is actually outputting a signal. Well, you know, all you need to do is to put it on there and that peak will show you whether or not you're getting a signal output but that's not all there's more we can do with this once we have grabbed the signal out of here and we can put it into either an oscilloscope and look at it or the spectrum analyzer and look at it we can get a great uh, deal more info all right let's say for instance that we want to look at our modulation so what you're seeing here is then simply my peak. WW8PR. But we can come over here and we can say analog demod. Right now it is in AM center frequency. We want our center frequency to be 147.66 megahertz. And that's an AM. We don't want it to be an AM. We want it to be in FM mode. Analog to mode. I always have to go through here and figure out where it's at. I can never remember. Under frequency, no. Uh, measure? Yes, FM. Okay. So now we're set. 147.660. And you should be able to watch the analog demodulation of my signal. 
WW8PR is testing over. So you can see my audio spectrum over here. The RF spectrum is up here. And then the demodulated waveform is down here. WW8PR once again testing. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis. Very cool. So why can't you just plug a little radio antenna output like this directly into the front end of your spectrum analyzer or your oscilloscope or anything else? Well, because the front end of these instruments are sensitive, this one doesn't want any more than 50 volts DC max or 30 dBm max. Uh, dBm is a logarithmic measurement if you're not uh, familiar with this. Uh, this is decibels millivolts. So you're based off of a millivolt scale and 30 is the multiplication table. We'll get into dBm math at another time. But if you put anything over 50 volts into, into the front end of your very expensive piece of equipment, you're going to blow it up. So what this does is it takes just a little bite, just enough for you to see the waveform, and it lets the rest go on out to your antenna. Cool, right? And just because I know some of you will be uh, interested, what does the signal look like in an oscilloscope? WW8PR testing one two three four five one two three four five. Here we are testing. You can see it looks like a sine wave. One two three four five. Da, 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 da. All right, guys. That's about all I've got to say for this little RF sampler. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. Couldn't have gotten this without them. Big thanks to you for watching. That's it. I'm out. Peace.